Hi, I'm Steve Wilmus, and today we're talking about lack of participation in active shooter drills. This is the same thing as complacency kills. Your lack of participation just does everyone in. Uh, Matt and I originally, he's not here with me today, I just want to cover this real quick. We did a whole series of these, and then we realized the soundboard had disconnected his microphone, so we missed out on all of his audio. So I figured I would touch these up real quick and get them out there to you so that we can talk more about these things. Um, lack of participation in active shooter drills. My brother just reached out to me, his organization, which I will leave anonymous here. He had an active shooter on their campus as a team leader, as a management working there 20 years. He tried to take his team into a closet, tried to get them to settle down, be quiet, turn off their phones, and no one wanted to do that. There's a couple other things there that we can go into, like lack of a written plan, lack of any training, lack of any planning, our walkthroughs, our even discussions about active shooter drills. These are real scenarios now, folks. They happen, unfortunately, and I'm not sure they're going away. What you need to understand is it's very important that you deal seriously with those individuals that are not participating in your active shooter drills. Now, Recently, we conducted, Matt and I and uh, Joan conducted an active shooter drill at a local school district and librarian didn't participate. So when I walked in there, I asked if they had heard the drill. They proceeded to say, yeah, I heard it, but I'm not participating. That was exactly what they said. Okay, fine. Can I have your keys then? Since I walked into the library, I've probably either taken you hostage now or Unfortunately, uh, you no longer are going to see the end of the school day. So I took their keys. I was able to break into administration and then into a classroom, thereby having a couple scenarios play out. Either uh, other people perished as a result of your lack of participation, or I'm barricaded and taking hostages in this particular room. And that is not what we want. We want the participation so that you get a feeling and an understanding of what it is you're going to deal with and why you're doing certain things in that particular type of event. So active shooters are, they're, they're really low risk in the, in the sense that the probability that it happens at your particular facility in the first place is very, very low, but if it does, it's catastrophic. And so you have to participate, you have to prepare. And if you have teammates who are not taking it seriously, who are not preparing, who are not playing along in the role and the scenario, not practicing, those are all very serious issues because ultimately you're the individual that is going to face the consequences of their lack of participation. The worst part about this whole thing was this librarian had grandchildren in that particular school that she worked at. So you would think that they would take it serious enough to protect their own grandchildren. And if that's not the case, well, then you can only imagine what your children or your colleagues' children are facing in these particular environments. So lack of participation, it comes down to complacency, it kills, it allows other opportunities to open up. And remember, we talked about this in some of our other podcast sessions, and that is that if you get to the scenario, get to 911 as soon as possible, time is of the essence. That's the only thing that's gonna save you truly in these types of situations. You have to learn how to fight, but the faster you can respond, the more likely it is that all the doors get locked, everybody's inside, and the shooter doesn't get anywhere else. So time is of the essence, and that's the biggest advantage that you have. So you have to participate. You can't have someone that is allowing doors to open, allowing people to come in, allowing keys to be taken, all of these things. It just makes for a really bad scenario. I just wanted to put that out there. I know we're going to, Matt's writing a little bit more of a blog post on this particular issue, but think about it. 
Check out the website. If you have questions, if you need training on active shooters, please reach out to us. We we love to come out and do those. They're um, they're great insight and learning opportunity. And I think it's important that you guys practice those often, just like you do fire drills, earthquake drills, and all that kind of stuff. Have a great one, and we'll see you on the next Risk Control Show.